Have you watched The Man with a Thousand Kids? Oh my gosh, I went into it thinking one thing and left thinking something completely different. Either way, I am going to break down five things that I want to talk to you guys about in regards to this series from a licensed therapist perspective. Hey, hey, everybody, welcome to my channel. If you are new here, hi! But if you are a returning subscriber, you already know how my review videos go. Full disclaimer, there will be spoilers in here. So if you have not watched this series on Netflix, press pause. Er, go on over to Netflix. It's only three episodes long, meaning it is a limited series. And then come back and chat with me in the comments because you know we got some things to discuss. One of my favorite things to do is talk to you guys in the comments about these shows. So put in the comment section, let me know your thoughts about this. What did you think about the series? What did you think about Jonathan? What did you think about the donor parents, the kids? All of the things, we about to get into it right now. The first thing that I wanna to talk to you guys about is clearly Jonathan. I think his name is Jonathan Jacob Myers Majors, however you pronounce his last name, but we gotta start with him. And I'm starting with him because everyone has the same question. Why on earth would somebody do something like this? While there is no exact diagnosis for what he's doing, there is no diagnosis that says, hey, if you're trying to overpopulate the earth with your DNA and have thousands of kids everywhere for the sake of helping other people, this is the diagnosis for you. There isn't anything like that, but two things come to mind when I think about Jonathan. One of these you've probably heard before because y'all like to overuse and misuse certain psychological terms. And then the second one you may not have heard of. The first one is narcissistic personality disorder. Y'all already know what that one is. But the other one that I was thinking about in regards to him is called antisocial personality disorder. Now, both of these are considered personality disorders. A lot of them can be genetics, it can be, but majority of this is rooted in their childhood in regards to their relationship that they had with their caregivers or the people who raised them. It essentially means they didn't really get what they were supposed to get in their childhood from the person that was raising them, who was supposed to support them and love on them and do all of those things. So it caused a disruption in their personality style and so they grow up to be a certain type of way. That's the quick and dirty version, but if you want to learn more about it, go on over to Google and type in antisocial personality disorder, narcissistic personality disorder, and you will see the difference between the two. Why I think it's antisocial personality disorder is for these reasons. He didn't seem to understand the difference between what is right and wrong. He didn't seem to fully respect the thoughts and feelings and the emotions of other people. He was constantly lying and deceiving. He was manipulative. He was arrogant, and he engaged in a lot of risk-taking behavior. Now, if I'm being honest with you, because y'all know I like to give my professional opinion about this, I firmly believe that Jonathan started off with the right intentions and the right motives. And I'm saying starting off, I'm saying the first time, the very, 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 very first time that he wanted to donate his sperm to help a family who wasn't able to conceive in you know, the normal way, I believe that he wanted to do that from the purity of his heart the first time, but something happened where it became impulsive and addictive and he was just overly drawn to this process. And so he wanted to do it over and over and over again. Because if you have not, watched anything that this man has said and done he is hell bent on he is doing things for the right reasons and all he wants to do this whole entire time is help people he does not understand and see that he is causing harm to himself and to other people and to all of these kids and families when he went to court and they asked him how do you plan to mitigate the situation from inbreeding and incest and all of these things and his dumb reasoning if i'm being blunt and honest was oh, you know, all of my, my donor children can put a little social media mark on their profile to let them know that, you know, I'm their dad. And so they know not to, you know, be romantically involved with each other. What? That was literally one of the dumbest things that I have ever heard. I was like, oh, he doesn't get it. It's not registering in his brain what he is trying to do. Why are you low key trying to have your DNA as one of the prominent ones in the world? It's almost like he's having as many kids out here as Genghis Khan. But the thing that I really wanted to talk to you guys about before I move on to my next point is that Jonathan is still making YouTube videos, y'all. 
I was being nosy. <laughs> and so I went on YouTube and I was curious. I said, mm, I wonder if he still has his YouTube channel. Maybe he took it down. He didn't want all of the smoke, you know, after the Netflix series came on. Oh no, I was wrong. Not only is he still on YouTube, he has way more subscribers than he had when the Netflix series came out. And he's currently making videos, y'all. I mean, like two, three days ago, he's posting videos about his own review of the Netflix series. I was like, is this for real? I'm not even gonna lie, I browsed through and watched a few minutes of each of his latest videos and there's still no accountability. He's just an odd individual. When I think about how he starts his YouTube videos off, hi, my name is Jonathan, thank you for watching another one of my video blogs. I was like, is it just me or am I the only one who thinks he's a little odd and different? When he was eating raw meat, <laughs> In the woods, that should have been a red flag to all of the donor parents to say, oh, no, 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 this isn't somebody that I want to share my DNA with. But this really begs the question of, can you truly stop and control someone from procreating? Now, we know what the result of the court case was and that they basically limited him from, you know, donating his sperm in the Netherlands. And if he did, he would be charged like a some type of how many euros, I can't even remember how much it was, but I think it was equivalent to something of like 100,000 US dollars per donation. So that was something that he's probably going to refrain from doing, but that didn't limit him from going to other countries, doing the same thing that did not limit him from giving his sperm to other families who want to have more children. That did not limit him from sleeping around and getting other women pregnant, which we gonna talk about in a second when I get on these donor parents, but there was just so many holes and gaps that didn't fully stop him from doing what he's doing. My last thing that I wanted to really talk about, and you guys can share in the comments what you guys think about this part too. I was thinking, where is this man's family? I'm talking about his own biological family. Like where is his mama, his daddy, his siblings, <laughs> you know, his cousins, his aunts, his uncle, like where is his family? And why aren't they checking him? Why aren't they coming out and saying, hey, yeah, why aren't they trying to stop him? What What's going on there? Because I even tried to look it up like, oh, Jonathan Jacob, you know, his family and see, you know, if anything popped up, if his parents were living or anything of that nature. And I couldn't find anything. But all I know is if one of my family members was playing some games like that and doing something like that, you best to believe I will be like, come here, <laughs> you need to stop. If you don't, I'm gonna be on the Netflix series telling people about what you do it. It made me wonder where his family is, where his real friends are. And it also made me think about his own life. What does he desire and want for himself? Does he ever desire to actually get married and have children of his own with his wife or his potential partner? Who's gonna wanna date you when you got over a thousand, two thousand, three thousand kids on the face of this earth? Your chances of meeting somebody is real limited. So the question is, will he ever truly settle down? And who is going to be that person that does it with him? Number two, the second thing that I want to talk to you guys about are the donor parents. I completely understand that everybody has the right to want to be a parent, no matter what the situation and circumstances are. But every case in this limited series was different. We had same sex couples who obviously can't procreate. So they wanted to have a family of their own by using a donor. We also seen a married couple, right? Where she was a little bit younger than her husband. He already had kids from a previous marriage. He had a vasectomy. Me. They got married. She wanted a kid. He, he couldn't reverse his vasectomy, so they went the donor route and had multiple kids with Jonathan. We see people in different phases of their life and wanting children for different reasons. And we've seen somebody else who's like, I don't want no partner. I don't care about none of that. I am just going to do this for myself because I've always longed to be a parent. Now, as I mentioned before, every single couple is different and everybody has a personal choice. Whether you choose to go to a clinic, and find a donor that way, or you choose to do a personal donation, I think that there are pros and cons to both. This reminds me of the video that I did on Debrat, which is a rapper. A lot of y'all didn't even know who she was, which is crazy to me. And her wife, who is a same sex couple, and they had a child by a donor. It also reminds me of the conversation that we're currently having with Ebony K. Williams, a black woman who has all of the things, success, education, all of that and she's like I still want to be a mom and so I'm gonna go ahead and do that <laughs> and she didn't have a partner so she chose to get sperm from a donor at a clinic 
and now she's currently pregnant. So this isn't the first time that we're seeing stuff like this. This even happens with celebrities and it's more of a common thing than we think. For me, it gets a little tricky when you decide to go the personal donor route because I'm wondering if that has contributed to the ongoing issue that is happening, especially in regards to this situation. Because it's clear you can't regulate sperm when he's going around behind the clinic, outside the clinic, <laughs> giving people sperm in their car, they injected it while they're driving, like doing all of the things, you, there's no way to regulate that. So we want all of these laws and ethics and regulations around the thing, but we still see people engaging in those options. I'm not saying it's right or wrong, but I'm just saying that this is something to consider. It annoyed my soul that all of the donor parents thought he was so fine. It was like, oh my God, he was handsome and smart and his hair was so long and curly. And I just wanted my kids to have curly, good hair like him. I was like, so y'all just bypass all of the fact that he was eating raw meat and looking weird and sounding weird. Y'all discernment. <laughs> was somebody spidey senses should have been going off and saying, mm, something's off with this dude. Let us press pause or at least pull back and do a little bit more research about him before we include each other in our world and intertwine our DNA to make a child. With all of the technology in 2024 at the time of this video being recorded, we should have done way more research outside of that longing for a child website that looked really bootleg and that somebody three-year-old made. I just was like, y'all really was on this site thinking that it seems real and legit when there was some phoniness and some foolishness happening behind the scenes. We have to do more research and do our due diligence in situations like this because this is probably one of the biggest decisions that parents will make in their life. I've always said this, these are the two most important things. If you choose to marry, who you marry is so important. If you choose to have children, who you have children with are important. Those are probably like the two top two important things that I think is across the board that everybody should really pay attention to and not just do things haphazardly. And even though he said that there wasn't any money attached to it and he was just helping these parents, no, nah, these personal donations, they weren't doing this for free. Ain't no way they were doing this for free, but that was one of the things that I felt like the series didn't say, like how much was Jonathan getting paid for these personal donations? I want to know. It was clear to me, no matter what the situation was, every single parent were desperate to have a child. One of the ladies said that I just wanted to have a baby so bad that I wasn't thinking rationally. And she was correct. The way that these women allow Jonathan in their lives raise some safety concerns for me. The ease of him wanting to have sex with these women very easily, without hesitation, the natural way, and some of the ladies went along with it, right, concerned me because then that brings us to think about the questions around our sexual health, around sexually transmitted diseases. How many partners have you had for real? Because in our culture now, we think a body count doesn't matter, but in this situation, it does. When I'm sharing my body with you and you potentially have thousands of kids all around the world, how many people have you been intimate with? And because we're intentionally trying to get pregnant, that means you're not using protection. That means you are, in, that means you're not using protection and you are opening me up and you up to something that may not be curable. The willingness of him and the donor parents to want to do things, or some of the donor parents, let me clarify, to want to do things the natural way was wild to me. And I think a lot of them wanted to do it the natural way because they thought he was so fine. Like, oh yeah, he want to have sex with me and you know, I can get pregnant and nobody's going to know. Mm -mm. Now nah, we know. Before I move on to the next topic, the last thing that I really want to discuss is these parents seem so concerned with who they chose to have a child with. They did their research, allegedly. They took some time to kind of like find the right person. But one of the things when you're doing a personal or a private donation is you don't get all of the support that a clinic would normally give you. Are you truly getting that person's for real medical history? I also think that they need to start including some psych evaluations in this because I think we would have found out very easily that Jonathan is 
or does have narcissistic personality disorder or antisocial personality disorder. I really believe that. And so these donor parents are cautious to make sure that they chose the right person. And in actuality, they wind up choosing the wrong person. And now it's impacting not only them, but tons of other families and now the world. To me, they still chose somebody who wasn't fully mentally well. The third thing we have to talk about is the incest or the inbreeding that was a huge thing in this documentary. They talked about this thing called genetic sexual attraction. And that is when you are genetically attracted to someone and you can kind of confuse that with a romantic sense of love. That was the biggest fear for a lot of these donor parents because they're like, oh my gosh, he has thousands of kids in a very saturated area. I think at least three of the kids went to the same school. So there is potentially an opportunity for them to like someone who might be their sibling or to have kids with someone who might be their sibling unknown to them just because Jonathan wanted to be out here wild and out. I think that he thinks just because he has been open about being the donor parent and open to being in these children's lives and being a part of their families in some capacity. He thinks that that is enough and that is sufficient for him to not have all of these incestuous children around the world. And I get it when you go to a clinic sometimes or when you go through other means, you don't get the opportunity to know who your donor parent is. He thinks that just because he's open about those things, that's going to mitigate some of the incest that could potentially happen. If I'm being honest, I was so pissed. I was not happy when that other serial donor dude named Anthony Friedman, Friedman, whatever his name is, said that he wanted to bleach Africa. The blood pressure was rising on the inside of me. I felt it rising because I said, how sick do you have to be in order to think you are just spreading your DNA in a particular continent and you just want to wipe out the country or whitewash the country like that, excuse me, the continent, that is just ridiculous. And I would have felt that way even if it wasn't Africa, if it was some other continent, but that's just a very sick way of thinking about this. You can tell that he's not trying to do any of this to help people, but he has some weird, sick ulterior motive. I'm like, Forget all of these serial sperm donors. Like, yeah, we got one and, you know, there's still some limitations there. But why not go after all of them? Like, get all of them, especially since we know who majority of them are. They're very public on social media. They're doing all of these groups, Facebook groups and sites and all of these things. Go after these people because it is absurd and it's just not even genetically okay for someone to have so many offsprings in the world. Think about a thousand, two thousand, twenty thousand years from now, what the world will look like because we just got one person's DNA everywhere. Weird. The fourth thing that I want to talk to you guys about is the children. Nobody can tell me that this isn't going to cause some massive trauma with these children, with the parents too, and with the families. But this is going to be generational trauma that is going to last for decades and decades. These donor parents are going to have to choose whether to tell the children the truth or not. Either way can be traumatizing for them. Can you imagine having 800, 900, 1,000 plus siblings? Crazy. Whether it was a few that was on this Netflix series or if there's tons of other ones out there who did not want to be exposed, there's really no hope in these kids knowing their dad. There's no way you can go to a thousand birthday parties. There's no way you can go to a thousand graduations. There's no way you can show up to their recital. There's no way you can do this. The generational trauma part makes me think that you're never truly going to be able to fully know your lineage. Now, I know they got Ancestry.com and 123andMe or 23andMe, whatever it's called, and we can get to know people that are in our lineage, that's a thing now, but you still are never going to really be able to have that authentic relationship with them when you have brothers and sisters and cousins and all of these different people all over the world. It's impossible to keep track of. Is that family tree going to look like? And to add this extra layer onto it, think about the bullying and the cruelty that happens with children in this generation. 
Y'all already know that people and these kids get bullied for the smallest things. Can you imagine getting bullied? Oh, your daddy got a thousand kids. Your daddy got 3,000 kids. You're, you're, we're from a donor. You don't know who your daddy is. And kids are so cruel these days that they can literally die by suicide because of stuff like this. So this has some very serious psychological effects that maybe the donor parents, you know, got themselves into unknowingly or knowingly and who Jonathan just don't have a clue about. The fifth and last thing that I want to talk to you guys about before I give my final thoughts is that this truly is a public health concern. This isn't just for the parents, the donor parents. This isn't just for Jonathan. This isn't just for the Netherlands. This is for any and everybody. It'd be too much to say castrate him. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm not gonna go that far, but <laughs> something needs to be done because I don't think he's gonna stop anytime soon, whether that is secretly behind people's back or even publicly now that he still has a YouTube channel and people know who he is. I'm sure more people who are also sick, weird, and twisted are going to be reaching out to him even after seeing this Netflix series. I love seeing the courts control a man's body. And I'm saying that only because we see so much happening with women's health, women's sexual health, abortions and miscarriages and da da da. And you know, all of these rules and regulations around women's bodies that we don't really see that much around men's bodies. So to have something like this, this was like really huge and big. And I really hope that this is going to allow us to really have a true conversation around if you can truly control someone's ability to procreate, especially when it's so easy for men to do it. Because remember, women can donate their eggs too. Obviously, it's a much more extensive and a deeper process, but women have that option to, I actually know somebody in real life, in my personal life, <laughs> who did the whole process and donated her eggs and got a lot of money for that as well. So this isn't just something, sperm donation isn't just something for men, but women can also donate their eggs as well. So my final thoughts on this is I'm not even going to lie. I enjoyed this limited series. I went into it thinking, uh, it's going to be whatever. Like, I'm just going to watch it because I know y'all were DMing me, wanted me to review it. And as the episodes went on, I became more and more intrigued. And I just seen different pinpoints that I can talk about from a licensed therapist perspective that maybe some of these people haven't considered. So while this was intriguing, I'm kind of glad that this was a limited series. I don't think it needed any more episodes <laughs> than what's already there. The three that they did was enough. I'm glad that they packed everything in there because I can't see this being a more extensive series or even coming back for like a season two or something like that. I don't see that happening for this unless something major and unprecedented it happens with this situation or something more intense happens, then they may bring it back for a part two. Jonathan is clearly capitalizing off of this, okay? Like, I know that he wasn't a part of the Netflix series because he refused to comment and we've seen that written on the screen multiple times, but he is probably getting paid and he's monetized on YouTube, which is probably why he chose to continue to make videos because he knew people like me and probably some of y'all <laughs> are gonna go to his page and watch it after this as well. So he's getting some type of compensation from his story. And it ain't from Netflix. I'm also glad that the women and the donor parents have community. I didn't get a chance to really talk about that as much, but the fact that they connected with one another, flew across the country to connect and introduce the kids to one another and to see their siblings and to cry on each other's shoulders and to really know what they are experiencing, knowing that somebody else went through the same thing, I think that that's going to give them a lot of peace that they wouldn't be able to get if they didn't find each other. I guess my last question is, will this series provoke more laws around reproduction and procreation? And I guess the follow-up question is, should it or should it not? Because if there's more regulation on cattle and livestock than it is in reproduction, then we have some more deeper conversations that we need to consider. So thank you so much for watching another review video on my channel. Please make sure to stick around, watch some more review videos on movies and TV shows, and I will see you next time. Be blessed. Bye.